I've spoken to real ROT people. They've told me what it stands for. What's it stand for? Reviewing old trailers. <laughs> Punch the wall and I can't get there. And here we are again with another episode of reviewing old trailers. You guys were really responsive. I got loads of good suggestions for trailers to review. One of the most requested trailers to review, and by most requested I mean two people asked for it, was Alien from 1979, the original theatrical trailer. It's a good variation. Last time we did mid 90s and now we're doing late 70s. Right off the bat, this is a much better trailer than the Forrest Gump one. I criticised the Forrest Gump trailer for being too long and showing way too much footage from the film. This trailer does the exact opposite, it's so subtle, it's so suggestive, there's nothing given away, and it all ties in with the themes of the film, the fear of the unknown, the claustrophobia. The trailer itself from the shots it uses feels very claustrophobic. So it captures the essence of the film without giving too much away, it's like the perfect balance. I can see why this was suggested, because it does strike me as like one of the best trailers ever made, like a very historical trailer. So the trailer is just under two minutes long. There are two very distinct halves, it's very clearly split down the middle. The first half doesn't show any footage from the film, it just shows this egg on this what looks like a planet. It's very reminiscent of Eraserhead, the opening of Eraserhead, with like the egg that's also looks like a planet, because there's an extreme close-up shot of the egg in this trailer that makes it look like it's a planet, so it has that double entendre thing. Thing where it's both an alien planet and an alien egg, you know, film class. The way we descend on the egg like it's a planet at the same time, very, very reminiscent to 2001 A Space Odyssey. That's probably a direct reference. I love how minimalistic it is and how much it gets across with so little. And of course, it's accompanied by the iconic alien title sequence. The slow reveal of all the characters as you get more shapes that add context to what you're seeing, which again, it's just a really good thematic representation of how you slowly get more little small pieces of information that supplies you with more context but it's still a very small amount of information and it's very slowly revealed to us. I'm just going to mention that just on its own the title sequence for Alien, the one that also shows up at the start of the film, is just one of the most iconic, subtle, like simplistic, just so thematically relevant to the film. It's brilliant, it's a brilliant title sequence. So obviously it's 1979 so big pre-existing sci-fi films include like 2001 A Space Odyssey and Star Wars. The film was actually actually only greenlit because of the major success of Star Wars. Also, Eraserhead does predate this, and I don't know if they took inspiration from that, whoever directed this trailer. The first thing I think of when I see this trailer is a razor head. And come to think of it, the two films do have very similar themes of fertility and impregnation. They're both horror films. They were only made two years apart because a razor head was 1977. A razor head had the same motif of the egg that's also a planet at the start of that film. I don't know if it's intentional. It's still artistic and minimalistic for a trailer. It's just a great representation of how much you can convey with so little, which is very in spirit with the film. And obviously the ominous music helps. Jerry Goldsmith, who did the soundtrack for Alien, I'm not 100% sure about this, but I think he composed the score for the trailer as well. Isn't it all just under one roof of soundtrack? Doesn't this Isn't this included in the soundtrack? Who fuck knows? And how like when the egg cracks, it's not just like your ordinary egg crack where like fuck all happens, just an egg yolk, you dickhead. It's this glaring light that comes out of it and that effect is so well done. <laughs> You can tell that was real, like they just got a torch behind it and went They didn't like, oh, we're gonna add a CGI lens flare in later. It's just little creative things, it's just so earnest and cute, but also just effective. And ch just charming. And almost as soon as the egg cracks, you get the iconic siren sound. And that sound absolutely makes the second part of the trailer. So the second part of the trailer is just a quick cut montage of different scenes throughout the film. And it's so good because they're so sparing with the amount of footage they use from the film. Nothing's given away, it's all left to your imagination. But it's not too little that you're like, what the hell's going on? What's this? What? What? Like, this is just vague bullshit. <laughs> you still get a strong sense of peril. This would have been absolutely amazing to see in the cinema. Like, what the fuck is that? I've got to see that.
back to that siren sound, it's just so distinctive. It's both like a spaceship emergency alarm going off, but also like an effeminate scream. And at the same time, almost an alien-like scream, or the kind of sound an alien spaceship would make. It's just such an alien sound in and of itself, and it's instantly memorable. It's like the definition of eerie. This whole trailer is the definition of eerie. Thanks so much for the suggestion. This is an awesome trailer. The best thing your alien trailer can be is minimalistic and like ambiguous, intense. Again, Fear of the Unknown just nails it, the trailer. You do get the shots of Ripley running through a hallway, which hints at the claustrophobia of the film. Just great cinematography with the lighting and the fog here. Just this gritty, grounded, industrial, futuristic spacecraft. A bunch of shots of astronauts in dark rooms with weird architecture. It's this strong sense of foreboding throughout the entire trailer. You do get glimpses of the amazing production design the very sexual production design you know i think i'm the first to point that out that uh, alien is a very sexual film we get like three quick cut shots of the cat as well like looking at something and i know it's a horror cliche to have like the dog or the cat like looking at the aliens like oh it senses something like oh but i don't know what they showed that cat but it genuinely looks like it's looking at something horrific it's so well done it's one of the best performances by a cat in a supporting role i don't know what they showed that fucking cat or maybe they just shone a light in its eye. Maybe it's something as simple as that. You do get quite a revealing shot of, I assume, Ripley's um, buttocks. Because I want to be respectful. And the film ultimately sees her emerge victorious over the alien as the sole survivor, spoiler alert. But a very deep-rooted trend in horror films and just the horror culture in general was the sexual vulnerability of women. What are you going to do to me? I'm going to kiss you. That's why it's always like the masculine man who has to save the very feminine woman from the monster. Alien was just so fucking revolutionary and avant-garde because it had the male characters be sexually vulnerable. And it really fucking gets you. It's really just sinister. It's just a fucking sick film. Like a Razorhead, it's about men's fear of pregnancy. They're the ones that are impregnated. I don't know if I'm going to review the film anytime soon, so I'm just going to say, yeah, it's 10 out of 10. Five, five stars on Letterboxd. It's an excellent film. The last shot of the cat is just fucking flipping out. They've really aggroed that cat. IRL. You can't fake that. They fucking pissed that cat off. They showed that cat like 50 dogs that day. Look at it. Oh. You do get a very brief shot of the face hugger coming out of the egg near the end of the trailer. And that's something that's just from the first act that's only hinting at the full potential um, threat of the alien force. As I said before, this was hot off the success of Star Wars. But what Star Wars established, as mentioned by Roger Ebert in his original uh, review, that sort of new wave style of the dusty, industrial, tinny, used car aesthetic of the futuristic human spacecraft. Alien strongly incorporates that into this film, and you can see there's a multitude of examples. <laughs> That's what science fiction had just recently evolved into, so they were capitalising off that, but still, they made it work within their own film. It's not like a trend, it's it's a little bit too specific to be a trend, but it's like they were inspired by it because it just works in another way in this film. Alien isn't fantasy. They're just all ordinary, everyday workers, like on an oil rig, but just in space. You get a little shot of fucking Ian Holm flipping out. Fuck off, there is no way of predicting what's going to happen from not having seen it. It's a great movie. It's just people flipping out. Again, with the claustrophobia, there's a bunch of headshots of characters almost trapped in the frame, you might say every frame of painting. It's just hectic, there's handheld footage. Thing is, it does show stuff from all acts of the film, it's just so minimalistic about it that it works. It just doesn't give anything away. Overall, brilliant trailer. One of the best we've seen so far on ROT out of the two we've actually watched. Artistic, minimalistic, creative, all the good things about filmmaking are in this trailer or incorporated into this trailer. Great music, great cinematography, but that's more down to the film itself. But then again, you have the additional footage of the egg, which is also just nicely shot, simplistically shot. Anything that reminds older film buffs about a razor head uh, gets uh, five stars in there, but or at least get some brownie points. Oh, razor head. There's obviously that tagline in space, no one can hear you scream. Probably one of the best, if not the best tagline of a movie ever. 
in the history of film. It's not a quote from the film, but people just quote it all the time. Instantly memorable, captures the spirit of the film, instantly unsettling, a brilliant tagline. Five out of, ta five, out of five tagline. Let's rate every little detail, their own fucking criteria box, 10 out of 10. IMDb. IMDb. Oh. oh, sorry, I just looked at IMDb. Don't know what happened there. Um, yeah, I think that about does it. I don't want to drag this one out like last time. Great trailer. We're going to do like a trailer leaderboard. So, so far it's Alien trailer, Forrest Gump trailer, and that's it. It's better than the Forrest Gump trailer. Forrest Gump trailer was overall probably a negative trailer, perhaps maybe like a 5 out of 10 trailer. God almighty. Thanks for putting up with this retarded series. Thanks for all the suggestions. Keep them coming. Put more suggestions in on this video. I'm just going to leave it all to you. For the most part, the trailers that get the most suggestions are going to be the ones I pick, but don't be dissuaded if there's some really niche trailers of like films that I've never heard about. Just put them in there because that'll be fascinating. So go to town with that. I'm enjoying this series. This is, even though I joke about how shit it is, I'm enjoying it. I think... I provide at least somewhat ample commentary. Yeah, thanks so much for watching. This has been a good episode of Rot, and I can't wait to rot again with you.